Okay, in this video we will briefly cover a priori power analysis using G-Power for a one-way ANOVA. In this scenario we will be performing a test of mean differences on a dependent variable involving three population groups and we're trying to come up with an estimate of the sample size needed to achieve power at a given level. Power refers to the likelihood of rejecting the null hypothesis, that is, achieving a statistically significant result. Among other things, power is a function of the population effect size, alpha, and sample size. And when we're using G-Power to carry out our analysis, what we're going to be uh, doing is including a projected population effect size, an alpha level, and a sample. And, and um, what we're trying to do is uh, arrive at a projection in terms of the sample size required to have a power uh, have power with our test of a given level. Specifically, we'll be looking at 0 0.80. So for the current demonstration, we're going to assume an alpha level for our test of 0.05, and we're going to estimate the sample size needed to achieve power for our test at 0 0.80, meaning that we would have an 80% chance of rejecting the null hypothesis, assuming our projected population effect size is correct. And I have that underlined for a reason, and that is because we oftentimes uh, pay little attention to uh, you know what what we're really trying to test we're really trying to uh, detect uh, the population effect and so uh, what that means is that we need some projection of what the population effect size would be so um, if if our projection is incorrect then what that can translate into is a lower powered or uh, or maybe a overpowered test so it's a good idea to spend time doing your homework to arrive at a reasonable projection with respect to the population effect size it's very easy for folks to spend a lot of time uh, focusing in on Cohen's effect size conventions and not thinking about what the effect size might be in the population and so when I say do your homework that means go uh, do your reading look at the literature see what um, you know what um, the effects uh, tend to be within your area uh, so determine if there's an empirical track record that gives you an idea about uh, maybe uh, kind of informs your projection uh, or at a minimum try to at least arrive at a logical deduction as to what that projection might be if you don't then you can end up with an under or overpowered test now given that uh, what we're going to do in this particular uh, demonstration is we're going to rely on Cohen's effect size conventions because I'm not really uh, using uh, any kind of um, literature or rationale in terms of coming up with uh, projections but I'm going to just use these conventions for the time being so I do want to mention that G power um, it, it uh, relies heavily on Cohen's F and I did want to kind of point out that there are equivalences between Cohen's F and eta squared uh, basically we can mathematically convert one into the other uh, either direction obviously and uh, given that a lot of us when we are working with analysis of variance are probably pretty familiar with eta squared and less so with Cohen's F I just kind of have included these uh, conversion so you can see uh, you know see what they are so you can see a Cohen's F value of 0 0.10 which is uh, reflecting a small effect according to those conventions that would be equal to an eta squared value of 0 0.01 Cohen's F of 0.25 would be uh, associated with an eta squared of 0 0.06 that's for a medium effect Cohen's F of 0 0.40 would be um, uh, converted to an eta squared of 0.14 and that would be reflecting a large effect. Just keep in mind that if you use these conventions blindly without thinking about uh, the empirical track record or coming up with some logical rationale you're only picking three possible effects and, and judging them as small, medium, or large. It could be that the effect is smaller than 0 0.10 or it can be greater than 0 0.40 or it could be you know anywhere between 0.1 and 0.25 and 0.25 and 0.4 um, so just kind of keep that in mind that um, that the decisions that you make will impact uh, that they could have a you know ramifications when it comes to um, how powerful your test actually is. So now at this point, let's call up uh, G Power. So this is it right here. And I wish I could in, I wish I could blow this up, but it doesn't look like there's much of a way uh, to to do that. So uh, just kind of work with me here. But you'll see first. If I click on this button right here, it says test family. I'm going to go to F test, where it says statistical tests. Uh, the default uh, that shows up is ANCOVA. I'm going to click on this and go down to fixed effects, omnibus one way. 
And then you can see if I hover my uh, cursor over this box for FX size F, you'll see that we, we have our FX size conventions of 0 0.1, 0 0.25, and 0.4 for small, medium, and large. So the default uh, is giving us 0.25. The alpha level is 0.05. Uh, the power that uh, is associated with the default is 0.95, and we can change that. As I noted, we were going to try a power, you know, try to um, carry out a test assuming power at 0 0.80. So I can change this to 0 0.80, and then the number of groups is equal to three. So I'm going to change that. So, so we're basically assuming um, a, a medium effect size. Uh, within the population, the Cohen's F in the population would be 0.25. That's my projection, not necessarily actual. Um, the alpha level for a test is 0 0.05. The power um, is 0.8 that we're seeking, and then number of groups is equal to 3. So if I click on Calculate, you can see over here, or maybe not, because it is rather small, but the actual power is 0.8 and the total sample size projection is 159. So um, if we want the uh, sample size per group, we can just take the 159 and divide that by 3, and that gets us 53. So 53 cases per group if we're assuming uh, equal ends um, for your groups. If we're going to go with an uh, effect size, uh, let's go with this threshold of 0 0.10. We can just type in 0 0.10 here, leave everything else the same, click on calculate, and now you can see that the uh, sample size requirement for uh, power at 0.8, assuming uh, Cohen's F in the population of 0 0.10, the sample size requirement would be 969. So that's quite a difference. If we want to figure out uh, the number per group, we can just take the 969 divided by 3, and it's 323. So that's a uh, pretty hefty uh, sample size. If we're going to do 0.4, we can just type that in as well and um, click on Calculate, and you can see it drops to 66. So that would be 22 cases per group. So those are just, uh, again, using sort of the defaults or, or these uh, general effect size conventions. And you can see that, you know, basically as we varied, we kept power the same. Uh, we uh, kept our alpha level the same, the number of the groups the same. We just varied the, um, if the projected effect sizes, and you can see that the sample size uh, requirements were, were quite different. As I said before, though, it's not always it's not really a great idea just to rely solely on these conventions, but we might want to uh, calculate uh, the Cohen's F value for to input into the program. So if you use this little formula right here, the we can basically convert uh, eta squared, which again we're uh, we're many of us are quite familiar with, to um, to F. We can we you can see that we have uh, we can compute uh, F squared is equal to eta squared divided by uh, 1 minus eta squared right here, and that's all in parentheses. So let's say, for instance, that we want to find the sample size uh, required, uh, assuming a population eta squared of 0 0.09. So uh, we're actually trying to find Cohen's F, so what we need to do is we need to take the square root of all this in order to find Cohen's F. So you can see right here that I'm just taking 0 0.09 divide by 1 minus 0 0.09. Um, so taking that ratio and then taking the square root of that, and that gets me a Cohen's F of 0.314. So if I feed that into the program uh, right here, I'll just type in 0.314, leaving everything else exactly the same. Click on Calculate. You can see that the total sample size is uh, 102. So you can see that um, in this particular case, you know, we, we, we had basically still a fairly uh, medium effect uh, that was projected. And you can see our sample size in this case uh, is a little bit higher uh, than what was required when we had the projected effect size at 0.4. So um, at any rate, I do encourage you, again, to spend time uh, thinking about what your projected population effect size is. Do your homework. Um, uh, you know, otherwise, you can end up with an overpowered or under, underpowered test as a result of failing to uh, you know, come up with a reasonable uh, projection uh, within the population. And again, you can use uh, these formulas right here to, con to uh, convert uh, eta squared into Cohen's F and then use that in the program.